Today we're going to talk about the central dogma of biology. And this is a really critical part of biology. For example, humans have about 30,000 genes in their genomes, and we have so many different cell types. It's not necessary for every cell to produce the proteins that every gene encodes. So all of our cells don't make 30,000 different types of proteins. For example, my eyes are the only cells in my body that need to produce opsin proteins. Those are the proteins that absorb light and let me see things. It would make no sense at all to have a toe cell making those opsin proteins. So the central dogma winnows down those massive number of genes we have encoded in our DNA and the control of gene expression, telling each gene where and which cell type it's going to be expressed and how much it's going to be expressed is partly explained by the control of the central dogma, in which case the nucleus inside a cell contains, as we know, DNA. And DNA, using the protein RNA polymerase, is read by RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase produces a transcript. Initially, this is called a primary transcript. And in a eukaryote, after what's called RNA or transcript processing, that transcript becomes a messenger RNA molecule. So in the cell, in the nucleus, we have DNA. We have transcription. That's with RNA polymerase. And that produces an RNA molecule here. That RNA molecule gets exported into the cytoplasm from the nucleus. And that RNA molecule then is translated into protein. And proteins, as we'll discuss in just a minute, are made up of amino acids. We're no longer talking about nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, where we know that there are some differences between DNA and RNA. And there are three key differences that I'm going to talk about. This should be review. DNA is D for deoxyribose. That's the sugar that's made that comprises DNA. RNA is ribonucleic acid, or ribose. We have thymines in DNA. Uracils are one of the four nucleotides in RNA. And as you know, DNA is usually double-stranded. RNAs are usually found as single-stranded molecules. So we move from DNA to RNA in transcription. And then in translation, RNA is translated into the proteins, which are amino acids. Those are linear strings of amino acids. And that happens using the processed messenger RNA molecule in the cytoplasm by proteins called ribosomes. And those are the molecules that actually produce, by reading each messenger RNA molecule, they produce the protein. Proteins go by a few names. We'll also call proteins polypeptides. So this is the central dogma of biology. DNA is read by RNA polymerase, which produces an RNA molecule that's an intermediate that moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm where ribosomes are found. Ribosomes translate those RNA molecules and produce proteins, polypeptides, the objects that actually do the work in our cells. Most proteins, some proteins anyway, are enzymes. They catalyze chemical reactions. Some proteins are structural. They actually build components of the cell and so forth. So the goal of the central dogma is to produce proteins from DNA. Now, a couple of caveats though about that. There used to be an idea that one gene, one part of a DNA molecule would produce one protein. That's not always true. 
sometimes for some genes, the process stops here at transcription. There are some RNA molecules that RNA is the job of the gene. There's no translation. The protein is not produced from that RNA molecule. Some of those molecules include ribosomal RNAs. Those are RNAs that are incorporated into ribosomes that are important in translation. And also transfer RNAs. Those are also involved in the process of translation. So let's talk briefly about protein structure and amino acids. The building blocks of proteins, amino acids, have a particular chemical structure. So here we go, amino acid. There's an amino group, there's an acid group, carboxylic acid, and then we've got this R is called a side chain. And it's any sort of organic molecule. There are 20 different amino acids that are natural. I'll abbreviate amino acid AA. There are 20 of those. And those 20 different amino acids differ at this location, the chemical structure of their side chain. For example, the smallest amino acid, glycine, R is a hydrogen atom. So if it was NH2, CH2, COOH, that would be glycine. Other amino acids have different R's or side chains. And an important thing to note here is that the, like DNA, which has a five prime and three prime polarity, the same is true for RNA, there's also a polarity in proteins. There's an N terminus where the nitrogen or the amino group is at one end of the protein. And the proteins are linked through this carbon to another amino acid and another amino acid and so forth. And that's what produces the polypeptide, many peptides. So we could have another amino acid here. Okay. So here is the C terminus. of this dipeptide, two amino acid protein. Here's the amino terminus, here's the carboxy or C terminus. So this could also be termed the N terminus. And the way that translation works is that the, pep the ribosome forms peptide bonds. That's why this is called a polypeptide. And that's a reaction in which two hydrogens and an oxygen are removed. And so that carbon becomes covalently bound to this nitrogen, forming the peptide bond, which looks like this. With amino acid 1 here and amino acid 2 there. And so during the process of translation, as we'll see later, the ribosome just keeps adding new amino acids onto the growing end of that chain. So I showed you one amino acid, and I told you that was a glycine. It's got a side chain that's just a hydrogen, and the 20 different amino acids have some notations that are important to understand. Glycine can also be known by a three-letter code, GLY for glycine, and there's also a single letter code for each amino acid. In this case, glycine's single letter code is G. And what I'd like you to do for class is to consider the peptide sequence that spells, have a nice day. So each of these is a single letter code for a different amino acid. And what I'd like you to do is to write down what are their one, what are the names of those amino acids that produce that polypeptide or protein? Which R group has a sulfur? So figure out which of these amino acids in Have a Nice Day has a sulfur atom in it. Third, which are acidic? 
that is, have a negative charge. Fourth, which are basic amino acids, that is, the, at a physiological pH, they have a positive charge. And last, which have R groups or side chains that are circular. So come to next class with the answers to those questions.